<clears throat> Hallmarks of a cult, what cults do. Now, as I said in my original um, video, a cult can be described as an organization, a group of people, um, polarized around the teachings of an organization or a individual person. Basically, all cult members become brainwashed. I'm going to tell you something too, I'm a Christian, I've been brainwashed as well. Atheists are brainwashed. Agnostics don't know if they're brainwashed or not. Because they can't decide, they want the best of both worlds. Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, we're all brainwashed. Now, have our perspective religions on oh, the Muslims as well, my goodness, talk about, oh my goodness. Goodness gracious me. Anyway. Have we all been stuck into a room with psychedelic music being played at us? And we've divided of sleep and someone has been saying, You shall believe the Reverend Moon is God. You shall believe the Reverend Moon is God. No, we haven't. Although that has happened in the past with some groups. Generally, it's a case of information being provided to us, and it's the manner in which that information is provided to us, and how it appeals to us, and how we understand it, which determines whether we are convinced of a truth, or whether we are just convinced that someone else is telling what they believe is the truth. In a sense, with some of the things I've spoken about in these videos, put them all together and roll them into one. You get a stereotypical cult of an organization or group of people where a man stands up and says, I'm a prophet of God, and he says a lot of things that seem to make sense. He's got some testable evidence. He brings you a book which sounds like it could be the Word of God. And there are a lot of other really nice people around you. Embracing you and accepting you as you are. And saying, you know, change and come and join our group. And just bombing you with love. And then, of course, they restrict the information that you receive. They discourage you from openly studying arguments either for or against uh, your point of view or the religion that you're a part of. And that, in the end, comes up to control. Joseph Smith had some very slick words. He wrote these uh, Book of Mormon and the Pro Great Price, Doctrine of Covenants. Great imagination. And now the Mormons, in spite of what they might say, raise him to a par of equality with Christ and, in some cases, above Christ. Indeed. The words of Jesus Christ recorded in the Bible, like they say, are only only correct as far as they are correctly translated. Whereas the Book of Mormon, which actually plagiarizes a big chunk of the Bible, and um, the Pearl of Great Price, Doctrine of the Covenant, are considered the Word of God, period. The Jehovah's Witnesses have at their centre call the Watchtower Organisation. At the end of the day, belief is not enough. You've got to be a part of the Watchtower Bible and Drag Society. Outside of that is uh, nothing. Annihilation. Christian scientists have the writings of Mary Baker Eddy and uh, Ellen G. White 
He is a fawn in the side of the Seventh Day Adventist movement. And you will have Seventh Day Adventists who are quite evangelical in their approach to the Christian faith and will agree with many established Christian doctrines. And yet, there is a hardcore who are more akin to the Millerite movement um, and of the original Adventist movement. I remember watching a, a video uh, not so long ago about um, the Worldwide Church of God and how Herbert W. Armstrong had got a large majority of their believers to think that on the day he died, Jesus Christ would return. Of course, he was saying that um, his uh, return would be in the year 2000. But a lot of people expected some big cosmic changes on the day he died. Because the teaching had become polarised, not just around his Adventist beliefs, mixed in with some Mormon and Jehovah's Witness doctrines, which was Jehovah's Witnesses came from the, uh, from the Adventist movement, and the um, Christadelphian doctrines that he had incorporated, and the New Age doctrines as well, um, although they weren't quite as prevalent. Uh, really coming in for the Mormonism side of things of becoming little gods um, it became it became a huge influence and a huge control over the people cults will indeed generally be centered on the organization they'll be centered on the person the person will generally claim to be a prophet or mouthpiece mouthpiece um, the sole voice of God that because of him the organization he heads is now the remnant and they'll have all the slick sayings all the books and there and everything there and all the answers apparently at the same time restricting free thinking free speech the Jehovah's Witnesses still um, strongly discourage uh, parents from sending their children on to higher education. <clears throat> yeah indeed, these are the marks of cults that uh, they will control the information that goes in and they will elevate either a person or the people. It's one of the main issues in the Roman Catholic Church is that the cult of the Virgin, which has been prevalent for centuries now, seeks to raise Mary to the point of deity. They've almost, in some cases, effectively have raised the Pope to a point of near deity. They teach the Pope's words are infallible, and that when he speaks, that is it, it cannot be revoked, just as the, um, the Mormons do with their profit. So all of this goes to elevate men, elevate humanistic doctrines and put Christ out of the picture. Mary, just as all the other saints, cease to become examples of how she should live. They become the supreme example over the supreme example of Christ and it turns out that in Catholicism for example they pray to Mary on a regular basis as if Mary were the mediator in fact one of their popes called her the great mediatrix given her many attributes which in the Bible are only attributed to Jesus Christ the Messiah thus put in the Mary of the Bible at odds with the Mary of Catholicism. And this can be life controlling. This can mean that people take their eyes off Christ and start following something else. And indeed, that's what Satan wants. He doesn't care if you become a Jehovah's Witness or a Mormon or a Satanist. As long as you don't follow Christ, that's the hallmark of a cult.